All right, so good morning and welcome to today's Tuesday talk for the month of February. Um, we are going to go over the, um, the leveraging of our Google Drive for our two-way shared communication for documents, our survey for FY16, and also our FY16 input meeting. So jump in when you guys have questions. I'm currently sharing my screen with you so that we can work together. As you log in, please use the instant message button and perfect, Cynthia found it. Um, type your name so that everybody will have an opportunity to be logged on for our record. Okay. All right. So um, what I would suggest is you use Moxzilla or you use the um, Google Chrome to access our Google Drive. Internet Explorer has a lot of errors and issues. So please use your Google Chrome or your Moxzilla Firefox to access the documents. Uh, the first thing I wanted to ask is anyone having problems accessing our Engage One folder and downloading any of their documents? Is anyone having any problems accessing the documents that we have been sharing? This is our second year sharing on the Google Drive. I know that we have some um, new staff members this year, but I would like to continue with this um, platform next year. So just want to ensure that everyone um, can do that. I'll pause for just a few moments to see if anyone is having any issues downloading or editing the documents in our Google Drive help desk. Just a quick question, Natalie. Sure. Uh, the Google Drive, what's, is it easier to just bookmark that on Google Chrome and to get into it quickly? I absolutely have mine bookmarked, so I would definitely suggest that you bookmark it because once you have it bookmarked for the help desk folder, you have it for everything. So would you all like me to send that back out? I did that during the earlier session. I actually sent out a link for this. Would you like that me to do be, that now? Yeah, that would be great. If you could do that, I appreciate it. And what I actually will do is today is Tuesday. There seems to be audio problems. Oh, I'm I'm not speaking if you're listening for me to speak. What um, I'm gonna transmissions coming in all garbled. So, um, I'll give you a moment. What I would do is log out and then um, log back in. Uh, and I won't say much. I'll give you a few minutes. But what I'm gonna do so you guys will know, instead of me emailing it to you, I just added it to our appointment. So if you need it, at least you guys know that you don't have to look through an email. It's right here on our appointment. And unfortunately, I have to push send update, so I hate that you're going to get the update again. But if I send the update, you'll have it, and it'll, it'll save it. So now you know where the link is. You don't have to worry about I'm looking for it. It'll be on all of our appointments. All right, so is anyone, I'll wait for Mike to get back on, but is anyone having problems accessing the Google Drive? You can't access it. You can't download it. I haven't tried, Natalie. Awesome. All right. So everybody's good with Google Drive. The only thing that I would like to say is I've added, I should have added everyone's emails. I will double check those this evening to make sure that everyone's Cobb County email is on there. However, if you use Google Drive often and you would like me to add your personal, and I wouldn't really use my personal, I have one that's specifically for Cobb County. If you have a Cobb County um, or work Gmail that you want me to use, just use the help desk and you don't have to put anything in the message. Just send me your Gmail and I will be more than happy to add that for you so that you will have access. So moving forward, the remainder of this semester and next year, what I'm going to do is June the 1st, I'll be shutting down the Google Drive just like I shut it down last year. I will go back in and I will update all of the documents for you so that when we come back in July, August, you have access to all of the folders and all of the workshop summaries, um, the dates, the times, anything that we need to make changes for based on what the, um, the state tells us. And the state usually has a meeting, usually September and October. 
all of those items will be updated for you. And this will be our two-way communication platform. Um, is everybody good with that? We did have some discussion with some of our other staff members about the option to use Office 365. However, with our office, we're only 26 staff members, and we have found that Office 365 still has a lot of glitches, especially when more than one person is editing at a time. It's um, very lag, and sometimes things are not saving. And I don't want us to get into a situation where things are missing or omitted or not being saved, because that could um, frustrate us as staff members when we have 45 schools, which means 50 staff members actually assessing you know, accessing this document all the time. Um, some documents are view only, and the reason that documents are view only is because I do not want you to make changes to them. For example, the agendas, you know, are some of those are view only. However, you can download. So what I'd like to do is just show you two common ways to download items for your reference, um, and then you'll have those opportunities as well. So, um, the first thing we're going to talk about today is our annual input meeting. Here's the annual input meeting button. You'll double click it. It'll open up your folders. There's the building capacity on the workshop summary. Here's the feedback forms, the agenda. Here's a sample flyer. All the documents that you need are here. Um, sign in sheets, the whole nine. So you don't have to look for anything. These are the very minimum requirements. So if you would like to go above and beyond what's in this folder, Feel free to do so, but this is your platform. It's already been updated so that the documents say, um, we can open one up. The documents have been updated so that you have a two digit day, two digit month, and four digit year. All you have to do is change your school name here, the date, and the time. Um, here are the presenters, so you can manipulate this, but please don't change the title because it's annual title one parent took off input meeting all right so there you go it's all there for you um, parents were provided with the information I have here translation services provided and parents were allowed if you provide the reason this is in red some schools don't provide translation services if you're providing translation which you should it needs to go here under five and other requested activities we want to ensure that all parents have an opportunity to input. So if no one shows up to your meeting, you are absolutely 110% responsible for having this in a different way. So you might need to have it in the morning. Some people, um, I know Angela Burris at Smitha, um, she is recording hers or doing her live webinar and chats. That is fine. You have to offer a face-to-face -face meeting. And if no one shows up, it is the school's responsibility to go and add you know, to have this done so that you're getting people to come and not just staff members. Um, you have to have stakeholder input. So all of this is there for you. Are there questions. any questions? Yes. Yes. So is there a quorum of parents that need to attend? Because I wanted, I wanted to know if we send the letter out to all parents, can you still reach out to some key parents that you know will probably show up for you. Absolutely. Meeting. I would definitely um, have you go that route. Um, go with the parents that you know want to provide input um, with the input meeting. I mean, because we're going to get into this in a second, but when we talk about the survey, but this is your program evaluation. So the whole purpose of this is to say, how are you as a school, how is Floyd as a school doing as Title I? Are you providing the support that your parents really need? Um, I know that Floyd recently did um, a survey and they had a tremendous amount of parents who would like to have English classes to help their students. So they are working on a program where they're gonna you know, pay a Spanish bilingual teacher to come in and teach English classes to their parents. I don't know if that's gonna happen during the day or the evening or Saturdays. I'm waiting on the proposal, but that's a fantastic way to ensure that you're providing support for your parents in the area of literacy, which is always the biggest push in education. If our kids can read it and write it, you know, they can do it. So um, that's a great way. So this is your program's evaluation as far as how you're doing. Okay. So yes. Thanks. A, a quick question on your comment. You said that uh, 
uh, for a meeting if no one shows up, just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. uh, if no one showed up and you had a PowerPoint you were showing the, the intended audience that never showed up, would the PowerPoint suffice to put that on your website instead of doing a video? Sure, but what I would do is like piggybacking off of what um, Cynthia said is reach out to some parents and say, hey, you know, I'm going to put the PowerPoint on my website. I'm also going to put the input form on the website. Please take your time, go through the PowerPoint, um, call me with any questions that you have, or maybe set up a phone time where they can call you with some questions or, you know, have a go-to meeting or right. something like that where parents can still provide that input and you're available to ask questions. But yes, we're going to have to reach out to parents. Um, and I would say that you could even do that in addition to having a meeting. If you have the meeting and five parents come, but you're a school of 1,200, is that really enough people, you know, to, to make the changes? So continue to reach out. And I would like to talk about the ways that we reached out when we do our failure fair in May. And for those of you that are new, um, each year we'll talk about this in April, but each year in May, we come and we talk about our failures because failure is the best way to understand how to be successful. Um, and we talk about some heroes and people um, here that have failed numerous amounts of um, you know times before they were very successful. And failure is the best teacher. So during our failure fair, these are some of the topics that we'll bring up in May so that we can get better as a group. Natalie, could I chime in just for a moment? Absolutely. Uh, the technology team uh, came up with a suggestion with regards to having more parents, uh, giving more, giving parents more opportunities to, uh, to provide their input. Okay. And we suggested that we upload our PowerPoints. I don't know who that was that suggested that said, "What if no one comes?" Well, just if you just upload that your PowerPoint, Mike. you can do that a is Mike. If you can just do a voiceover over the PowerPoint, upload it to a YouTube channel, and just post it in the main office when parents are checking out students. That way, and they can they can actually sign in in the comment section on that YouTube channel specific specifically devoted to our parents at, of our schools. And so that's you guys projection. team up. It's have some time where you that's Mike at East Cobb. Mike meet um, Kim at now South Cobb. She's on the technology team. You guys team up over the next week or so and work that out and just see how it goes because the technology team is really helping us do some of those things and keeping track of that. And that's a great way to use time and to collaborate as a team. So take some time to see if you guys can have an opportunity to, to get a time to connect. And Kim, you can maybe show them how to do that. That would be amazing. Mike, can I come over and play with you? Uh, yeah. Well, you might want to re-clarify play with me, but you're <laughs> This call is being recorded. I'm going to have to edit that. <laughs> but yes. I mean, play with Enjoy. the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> yeah, I have a sandbox out here in the back. Uh, that, that's, that's really what I was thinking about. <laughs> awesome. You guys are great. All right. So are there any questions so far about accessing the information um, from our Google Drive? Well, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a Google Drive person. Uh, I've always used in my career Microsoft Office. So for me, Google Drive is something new. And the only people I know that use Google Drive were in the past were nerds, were I IT geeks and people like that, you know. I'm not an IT person. I'll be the first one. To <laughs> and, well, I will uh, take the IT nerd badge any day. Thank you. Hoorah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, nothing against IT nerds. My son-in-law is one at Georgia Tech. And so... Uh, My alma but, mater. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, I'll be the first one to say it. I'm, I have to look at these things more than once to figure out where is this at now and... You know, how do you download that? What I did have a problem with the other day was I was trying to take an, a document that was on Google Drive uh, and I wanted to uh, edit that document in Word document and I could not get the document to, uh, to paste. Uh, I was able to copy it, but when I tried to paste it into Word, everything was not, the formatting was off. So I actually well, had to end up retyping it. I'm glad. Oh, no, no, I don't want you to do that. Call me first. So what what we can do is really quick is let me show you two ways. If you go to any document and you can minimize me after I show you this and just try it um, now that you have the link. So when you go to any document, you can right click that document. And when you right click that document, there should be a button that says download. 
that'll download right to your desktop or wherever you want it to download. And at that point, you can make any changes that you want to if for some reason you're unable to open it. Uh -huh. But so here, that's, that's in Google Docs that you can do mm -hmm. that. Just click and right click. And also here, when it uh, there's two options. There's another one that says Open with. And when you open with, you just slide right over to Google Docs. And when you open it in the Google Docs, you should be able to type right on it. Like so. Right now, I'm going to change this from Riverside Primary. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put East Cobb Middle. Mm -hmm. There you go. You're, you should be able to do either one of those options. And I just want to let in, you know. Excuse me, but can you put in like little uh, boxes in front of, instead of doing uh, bullets, can you put little boxes and stuff like that? Does it give you that option? It does, but don't make changes to this form. Um, can see how I have. Form. I'm talking about another form that I was working with. Yes, you can. You can definitely. Um, they, you should have this toolbar at the top, which are all the same options as Microsoft. So okay. when you can insert tables and links and here mm -hmm. is the little, if you go to the more button, mm -hmm. right. you see there's your bullets and. Oh, okay. I see. That. Okay. So depending it. on what your toolbar looks like, you might have to go to more, um, right. but all of those options are um, still available. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Thank so, you. Yeah. So try right clicking it and download. And if you can't right click it, what I did was you saw, I just double click this document to open it. If you go to file here, there should also be a file download as. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and you can make your own folders, but from um, our standpoint here at our office, when we have to make folders for 45 schools, which is what we did um, two years ago, it was so much work, and then I had to remember whose folder was updated and whose folder wasn't, and it got very cumbersome. So now we're just going to have everything in one place. And if you want to download the folder, you can. What I advise, however, is at the end of the year, don't use that folder anymore. Because what I do is I shut this down in June, get the documents pretty much updated. And so I start opening them up and sharing them, you know, once I have it the way the state wants it. And generally they revise between like July and October. Um, so we're using exactly what the state wants us to use. Um, now, what format does the state use? Uh, Microsoft, it's, it's what's, right? Well, what I'm saying is the format of the document, not the platform. But like oh, this okay. document is comes from the state. So we right. want to make sure that we leave it formatted the way they have it. Correct. Yeah. OK. All right. So that's pretty much it for Google Drive. Again, if you'd like me to add a Cobb Gmail address, just use the help desk and shoot me over. You don't have to put anything in it. I know when I see a Gmail account what you want me to do with it, and I'll add you. You see there's some people up here. I'll just um, add you guys to that. Uh, so if I did that, then if I had, if I made up a, a new, uh, let's say a new Gmail account and just called it uh, Mike at Cobb at uh, Mike Chumley at CobbK12.org, mm -hmm. or Mike Chumley at CobbK12 at gmail.com, uh, then you would know that that would be my Gmail uh, and you would put the Google Drive, everything there, all my documents? Absolutely. So if you send me in the help desk your new Gmail account, I'll add it. Okay. I'll add you. All right. Thank okay. You. So are there any other questions about how we are going to deliver the input meeting? Um, over here in the um, our Tuesday talk, uh, our Tuesday Talk um, YouTube channel on our channel. I did not record a new one, but the annual Title I meeting and the input meeting have the same format. Very different documents, very different documents, so don't get the documents confused, but it's the same format. You can do the roundtable format, which I feel is the best choice. It's more interactive and it's more personal for the parents where you're talking one-on-one -on -one to small groups. Even if five people only show up to your meeting, it's an intimate you know, setting where you can have pieces and you can kind of chunk out the things that um, you wanna talk about when you're going through that agenda. Um, but the documents are different. So I did not record a new input format. You feel free to use your principal standing up for two hours talking through it or a very intimate setting of round table. Make it your own. 
we'll share those the successes um, at our failure fair. And I already sent out the annual input meeting PowerPoint, which just said, you know, ensure that you're reviewing all three documents, the school wide document, the school policy and the school compact to get input on. So are there any questions about how to deliver the input meeting, the documents to receive input from parents? Um, and this is due April 30th, um, the, both the survey and the annual input meeting are gonna be due on April 30th. So I know that I have not gotten the March stickers out to you. Um, they will go out tomorrow. Um, and so you should get them by the end of the week. There was nothing really um, to put in the March except for the um, any travel that you had from February should have gone in the February. But if you have your travel from the um, engagement conference and you need to submit travel documents, you can send them in your um, the March um, and just whatever you did monthly for your parents. On your April, which you'll also get um, the same time, I'll send March and April all together. In April, it'll say April 30th, your annual Title I um, items are due and your survey items are due April 30th. One thing about the annual meeting is during the annual input meeting, you have to send me the tallied results. So if you have 25 people come and they're sending out that input, you need to kind of summarize what your parents want, bullet it out, however you want to get it. I don't need all of the input documents. I only need the in, one input document that you sent out, which is a blank one with your school information on it. And I need the second document I need is it tallied, you know, what people actually said that they wanted, because that's how I evaluate your school program. And I take all 45 schools tallied results, and that's how we evaluate the district. Um, along with the district surveys and the district input meetings. So that's very important to our work as we begin the next school year. Are there any questions about how to get me the input in the April folder? Mm -hmm. um, the survey. So now the survey is the survey that we've been using all year to tally the meetings like the professional development, the Title I. Meaning, is that the same survey? I'm confused on a survey. It's okay. We're going to jump to survey in just a second, but in short, no, it's not the same. Okay. My, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's pro no problem. I just want to make sure we're good with the annual input meeting documents. And then I want to switch gears um, to survey before our time comes okay. out. Are we good? Um, no way. All right. Perfect. Okay. So let's talk about the survey. And I'm going to take this stuff off. All right, for the survey, is there anyone, and I'm going to go and look, that has not given me their school enrollment numbers for the survey? I sent out the link. We can go look at the names. There are 44 responses. That means one school has not given me their summary of responses. Is that one of you guys? Let's see. If you don't, tell me that I'm going to use the numbers that I had earlier in the year and they may not be accurate. Um, I know that I always estimate a little bit more, but I want to make sure that everyone gets a hard copy of the district survey that needs to go out. So currently I have Pebble Brook, Tap, Floyd, Lindley, East Cobb, Barber, Lindley Six, Campbell, Garrett, Cooper, Griffin. I think it's Navarro. me, Natalie. You think it's you? Yeah. Mm. I don't recall filling this out. Osborne. Yep, that might be you. So. And someone, the link was located where? I sent it in an email. Somebody, mm -hmm. um, I don't want Kim to get 13 emails. Will somebody pull this up and let her know by instant messaging her who's going to send this to her, please? Thank you, guys. Yeah, somebody um, find that email pretty, please. I think I sent it back out in the beginning of the um, week saying 10 more left, something like that. 10 schools hadn't. So that's good. You guys are um, getting those in for me. And basically, I'm just going to add these up and make sure your school gets maybe 10 more 
or 15 more than because I know that um, your you know the enrollment fluctuates. So I'll give you a few more, but I want to ensure that you have a hard copy for everyone. Okay, so perfect. I'll turn that off. All right, we're gonna go back to the help desk. When you're in the help desk folder, um, someone do me a favor and type these steps into the instant messaging, please. Who wants to do it? I can't type in top, sorry. Nobody? Please? Okay, I'll type it. Thanks. Okay. So you're going to go to Engage One Help Desk. So you can put just help desk. Then you're going to go to FY16 survey. And then you're going to choose either high school or middle school. So because we have a lot of middle schools, we'll just click the middle school. Once you're in the middle school survey, you're going to click the red button that says new. Once you click the red button that says new, you're going to click file upload. Okay. Here is where every school will upload their survey from last year. There were no changes from the State Department for the survey. Therefore, there should be very, very few changes on the survey. The major changes are your date, of course, <laughs> is going to change. Your school year is going to change for your survey. The other thing that we really need to make sure is that you actually um, have a question that asks about the budget. You must have a question that asks about your budget. I'm going to actually type in what my survey says so that you guys can, and I had it up here. Actually, I'm not going to type it in. I'm going to scroll down so you can see my screen. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. You're sh so this is what the county survey says. How would you like to see parent involvement, Title I, 1% funds used? You must ask a question similar to that, and it must say 1%. Every school received 1% this year, which they've been taking out 1% in the past. But you need to ask your parents how they want to see that, um, that spent. That's part of their um, right as stakeholders receiving Title I funds is to provide input for that. So here is my question. And you don't have to type this in because it's right here. You can copy and paste that piece if you wanted to. Just go up to it yourself. So the options that they have are to provide academic materials for parents to use with their students in the home, to fund a district parent resource room. That's because the district doesn't have one, but you guys do, so your answers would not be the same. To provide transportation assistance for parents to attend Title I events and to attend parent involvement conferences. And lastly, there's an other space. So that's what the district policy um, asks. So make sure that your dates are correct and that you have a question. The third thing you want to make sure that everything on your questionnaire you're still doing. For example, there was there were two questions on the district survey that the district is no longer participating in that particular item. So I took those items off and replaced them with something else. Um, so just read your survey and make sure that they're all things that you are um, currently working on right now. Question. Yes. About the use of the 1%. Uh, can you just uh, ask the parents what are your suggestions for how Title I parent involvement money should be used? Absolutely. So you can get a wide range of, I thought I found those limiting, but I thought if you ask it that way, they would have more range as to what their reply could be. Absolutely. I have no problem with that at all. Okay. That's a great question, Mike. Thank you for asking that. Mm -hmm. All right. 
to Natalie, when I clicked on the folder, mine was uh, empty. Am I doing something wrong? No. So let me minimize this again for you. Okay, so the middle school and the high school folders are empty. You have to go and upload your survey. Okay. So that's where you're going to go to file, file upload. I'm just going to choose something. I don't have my survey right here, but I'm going to double click my workshop. And you see now it's uploading that item. And once it uploads, I'll delete it because that's not what I want here. Um, but the workshop summary is in the process of uploading. Once that uploads, it'll show right here. Um, okay. Now, see, I don't have the option of uploading. A, um, where would I go to upload? So do you have the red button that says new? No. Okay. No. What browser are you using? I'm sorry. It's okay. What browser are you using? I'll open it again. Let's see. It's okay. You might not be logged in. And that okay. was something that um, I'm logged in as the 511 with Nat which is the one that I use for Cobb County. And see, now that my item is uploaded here, I'm gonna delete this because I don't wanna confuse you by putting workshop summaries in here. Um, the other thing that we need to do is to ensure that once we get 13 middle schools in here, it can't just say um, survey, survey, survey. Please put Lloyd survey, Campbell survey, Osborne High School survey <laughs> so I can keep my checklist really quick of who I'm looking at and for example I wanted to kind of introduce this platform at this point in the year because if there is something that is missing or inaccurate we are going to reduce the redundancies greatly because I'll be able to just type what's missing right on the survey and then say Mike your survey's great Go ahead and print it out. Kim, your survey's great. Go ahead and print it out. You know, Consuelo, your survey's great. Go ahead and put it out. Or Consuelo, number 25, I had to edit. It's good. Print it out. Instead of you emailing it to me, me looking at it, me sending it back, still having a problem, coming back, putting it in the folder, coming back. We've got to get a, a better system of making these kind of two-way um, communication. So... Two questions I have. First mm -hmm. is, uh, did you mention just now that we have to upload the survey for you for approval to send out? Yes. Before we send it out, correct? Yes. Is that what I understood? That's, a, and, that's correct. Okay. And my second question was, um, you did you say also previously that you are videoing this so we can see it on YouTube? Yes. Okay. Thanks. So this will come out. It usually takes me a day or so. Um, I'll send this to you guys and yes, please upload your survey and upload your survey by Friday. Um, I want to try to get it back to everyone by Tuesday. Um, so upload the survey by Friday? Upload the survey by Friday because you should have it from last year. So yeah, there, I do. yeah uh -huh. there's nothing that we really need to do. Most of the people uploaded theirs while we were talking earlier. Um, so just upload it by Friday that way and if you make any changes definitely get with your administrator make sure that they're okay with the survey from last year um, and they don't want to make any changes so that was my only caution to the group before I didn't want them to upload a survey that they hadn't taken back to their administrator I always take everything back to my boss before putting anything out so take it back to your administrator say it's survey time well, I'm gonna use the one from last year Natalie said that's good because she already approved it last year Number 23, we might want to change. Okay, Natalie, some of the things I missed, I don't know if I missed it in my training or what have you, but I was TA last year, so I don't have a, a survey of any sort, and I still can't see how to upload anything. I don't have the options that I see on your screen, okay. and I open it in, 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 in Internet Explorer as well as Chrome, okay. and I just don't have the option. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, and I'm logged in through my Gmail account, Okay. Are you logged in as your Gmail now? Yes. Is that what I did wrong? Yes, because I have you as Kimberly.Bunting at Cobb K12, but if you're logged as, you know, Kim795 at Gmail, yeah. you don't yeah. have access. Do you want me to get grant you access with your Gmail, or do you want to use the link that is on the... Um, that I just put into our meeting time. Please Which, grant me access. Okay, will you send me the help desk with your Gmail account, please? Yes. And I won't do that right this second, but I will do it before that. Not a problem at all. Sometime between now and 7 a.m. 
And so with regards to the survey, this is something that's new to me. So I really need help with this. No problem. Um, I will send you the um, actually you can do that right now. If you have you been to the State Department's website? Possibly. Because, yeah, I'm going to I know um, if you Google. I've sent it to you guys before, but I don't know where it is. Jado. I need help too, Natalie. I'd take your message. Okay. I title one. Think. I am mean, totally lost. It's okay. Well, um, did you not get the survey from TJ? He had one that was electronic. Survey. That's not the problem. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I right. got the survey. Kim, um, if you go yeah, to Jado, uh, title one. Title one. Mm -hmm. uh, let me find it. Federal programs. Yep. I, I sent it to you in a, in get, in a email. Okay. No I didn't problem. know you were going to discuss it today. No problem. Um, when I come here, that's not what I wanted to go to. I'll find it. But monitoring parent involvement. It's probably parent involvement. Parent, yeah, there it is. So the Title I parent involvement. These are all the templates from the state. So we're going to go down to find the... Policy, compact, parent meeting. Okay, so under the annual evaluation, there's a high school template. There's middle school, high school, um, and elementary. So you're going to need to click the high school template. Could you email that link to me, please? Mm -hmm. And so just click on that template. I don't want to open that. Okay. And then from there, I can, you know, just mm -hmm. figure out everything else. Yep. So now, when when you send the review of the meeting, will all of this be in there, or are you just sending it to those who are requesting it? Because I think you said you've already sent it. Will you just send it again? What am I sending? Um, just I guess because people are saying they're having problems along with myself with the survey uh, and how to get to it and download it or whatever. Where is your survey from last year? Do you have your survey from last year? No, I don't even think I have a survey from last year. I haven't it should still be on it. your website because not, none of the documents from Title I should have been taken down. So you don't have a new survey. That survey should be posted on Floyd's website. So look and see if it's posted on um, Floyd's website. Mm -hmm. Because that would be a good place um, for you to start. So you don't have to retype um, a survey. Or if you have a survey in the notebook that you had from last year, do you have the notebook from the person before you from last year? Yeah, but that notebook is not like um, it's, it's not like the one you've been having us to do. I was just hoping that maybe you could dig through it and find the survey yeah. so that you could have something to retype versus starting from scratch. OK, I'll um, look for it. And then if you need more time than Friday because um, you're, um, you have a new experience and also Kim has a new experience, it is a priority. Um, but if you need more time, then send me a message on the help desk saying I'm working on it and just give me a small little explanation so I can remember who still needs more time. Um, but for the staff members that have theirs, um, Friday would be great. Okay, and the survey would be on the website under Title One or mm -hmm. under District Link? No, not my survey, Floyd's survey. Floyd's survey. So there's two surveys. One is the district survey and one is your school survey. I will be sending hard copies of the district survey out over the next couple of weeks. Um, also, I will be emailing you a link to the district um, survey so that parents can take the district survey. It would be up to the school if you want to send both of those surveys together or if you want to send the Floyd survey or your local school survey out first and then the district survey or the district as you get it and then your school. It doesn't matter. Either way, both surveys are due 
um, April 30th. So on the district survey, it says, please return it to Natalie Hutchins or to your local school. So if you get them at the local school, you just need to send them to me. Don't worry about tallying the district surveys. You're only going to type, and I need to talk about that. Um, so with the survey, I'm going to just back up for one second. With the survey, the requirements for the survey are that all surveys are distributed and tallied by April 30th. Again, distributed to parents and tallied by April 30th. I know that April 30th is on a Saturday. So if you get it to me on the mail on Monday, that is absolutely fine. There's no need to drive over here. Just stick it in the mail um, on Monday. I'll get it the next day. The district survey, you're not responsible for tallying. If you get a bunch of them, just put them in a box, put my name on it, shoot it over to Title I, and we will tally those. But for the school level survey, I only want one copy of a clean survey, just one copy of a clean survey. The second document I need is the tallied results of your survey. I only need two pieces of paper for surveys, two. A clean copy of your survey and a tallied result of your survey. And that'll come to me for your binder here. Now, all of the surveys that you receive, you may wanna put them in a separate binder if you don't have enough space in your Title I binder, um, just like you have the compact signature pages in a separate binder because there are so many. The objective is to get 100% back, but I do understand that parents have had several surveys this year. So I know um, you guys were kind of saying before, reaching out to those parents that you know will respond, definitely reach out um, to specific groups of parents. And some of the ones that you don't think will um, respond as well, because sometimes um, people are just apprehensive about coming into school or having their voice being heard, or maybe um, they're not having a good relationship with someone in the building, so they don't feel like their opinion is valued. Um, check bases with your teachers and find out who some of those parents are and reach out to them personally. Um, the ways that you can reach out, postcards, um, phone calls, emails, um, thank you notes, those kind of things um, are allowable expenses if you need to purchase any like thank you cards or cards to send back and forth. Um, 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 sorry, South Cobb does a great job of um, feedback back and forth with the communication and the cards um, for their parents. Osborne also, they have their fly-by cards that they're consistently um, sending out uh, which are great tools for parents. Uh, the second thing is every student should go home with a hard copy of that survey. My suggestion would be that you also have a link to your survey. Um, survey Monkey um, only takes a certain number. You could do it in Google or in Office 365. There's a place for you to have an Excel survey. I'm going to be very honest with you. I had 4,800 surveys to tally last year from the district. So um, we created a the survey. And that way, I just took all the surveys and I typed them all in. And I got a really nice report of what people said to evaluate the program versus trying to hand tally those. I'm not saying that you have to do it that way. Do whatever's easier for you. but. Um, when you have a lot of feedback coming in, sometimes manual can be a little bit harder than creating the survey in some type of management system and just, thank you, and then just um, putting the, the responses in so you can get a nice clean graph of what parents said because this is the way that you're going to evaluate the program. So our program is evaluated in two ways. One, the local school, Cynthia, going back to your question. You have five workshops a year, for instance, and you get those inputs every time. You take those, you tally them, you send them to me. The next step is we have the annual input meeting where you take the input, you get the survey tallied results, you review them at your school with your office and staff and school councils and staff meetings, all that good stuff. You also send the tallied results to me. I'm able to look at the program. Um, then you have the survey. Again, the survey really talks about funding and things like that. The parents, again, are able to give input. 
So you use those three platforms to evaluate your program. Then you send those items to me. I evaluate the effectiveness of the program for all 45 schools. Plus, I have those same opportunities at the district level where I compile that information as well. And I put it all together to see how we're doing as a district to providing support for our parents. So those items are very important to the success of our program and to learn how to communicate with our parents better. Natalie, can you repeat that one more time? The three types of surveys that we need to send into you. I have meeting surveys, parent input surveys, and then is the last one the district survey? The first one would be any workshop surveys that right. you have the input, yes. The second one would be the school level um, survey, as well is as any- at the parent input meeting? Well, you could have the survey at the input meeting, but every parent needs to have the input, um, the survey to go home with them. So we're suggesting that, you know, you let them know, hey, the survey's coming home. This is what it's about, please, you know. And that's what's due on April 30th? Yes. Okay. The input feedback form from the input meeting and the local school survey are okay. due April 30th. All right, and what was that third one? The district survey. Okay. So the district survey says, please return to the district office to Natalie Hutchins or return to your local school. And a lot of times they just send it back to the local school, which is perfect. I don't want you to take an opportunity to go through those. Just box them up and send them over to me and we'll get them taken care of. Now, and will those be sent out to us? Yes, they're going to um, get to you in the next couple of weeks. Um, so it was really important that I have the numbers of students that you your enrollment numbers so that I could get you a good number out to you guys. Got it. Thank you. You're very welcome. I have about um, seven more minutes before um, I have to switch gears to the next meeting. Is there any other are there any other questions about Google, the input meeting or surveys that I can clarify? That's our purpose today, and we've been, you guys have been tremendous and, and great and really given us some things to, um, to think about as we approach the close of the school year. Natalie, I have a question. Sure. What's the earliest that you can have your input meeting? Today. Okay, so it can be March 31st. Oh, absolutely. Anytime before April 30th. Just before April 30th. Okay. Okay. Natalie, when you say... Um, a clean copy of the survey, do you mean uh, just a plain copy yes. that has not been filled or, or yes. uh, one that is legible? Nope, just a plain copy that hasn't been filled out. Okay. And you want us to create an, well, we could create an electronic version of our local school level and our parent input uh, surveys for you, Natalie? Yes, that would be fine. And then that way you can just send me, you can, uh, for instance, I'm um, having hours done in Excel because Excel is pretty basic um, on 365 and there's not a limit to how many people can actually put the input in there. So I just am going to go and click out, print out the one page, the summary page, and that's what I'm going to put in the binder here at the district office for the tallied results versus me trying to tally it by hand because it's just a lot. Okay. Now I am confused about the difference between the local school level survey and the parent input survey. Okay. Could these essentially be the same document, or do I need to create two separate things? You don't need to um, create them. Let's go back to the Help Desk folder. When you go to the Help Desk folder, you have the Annual Input Meeting. Mm -hmm. If you double-click the Annual Input Meeting, there is an input document where parents provide input on the school-wide plan, the policy, and the compact. Okay. See, this is your school parent involvement And then the local school plan, one? Policy, this is your local, and this is, so this is that, the local school-wide plan, policy, and compact. This is where parents provide input. Provide this is the input, input survey. Right, this is the input survey, where they are physically at a meeting, or as Mike suggested, a meeting online, where they're going to give input mm -hmm. on those documents, just those documents. Okay. The survey and the local school level is survey. about just the program itself. How are we doing as a school? You know, do you understand? Is the communication good? What do you want to see us do? How do you want to see us spend the money? So that's why we kind of do it around the same time of the year because we want to do these, um, the input opportunities after parents have had the majority of time spent in your building. We don't want to ask them in August for input when you haven't done anything for them. Right. So by now, most of you have had three or four meetings. 
we generally actually have about six different opportunities a year. So um, by April, March, April, you should have had parents into the building that can say, and Cynthia, actually, that's a, um, a good place to start too. go back through the meetings, um, the sign in sheets for the parents that have come to things. Mm-hmm. That's a good place to um, to start. We had a school do that last year. I just remembered they went through their um, sign in sheets. And those are the parents that they called on again and said, you know, thanks for coming in March. Will you please do our survey? So um, that was from our failure fair last year. That was one of the things that was shared out. I just remembered um, as a strategy you do level survey. The local school level survey you don't have because you are TA last year, and that's the template that I just emailed you. Mm -hmm. So you you said you just emailed that to me? Yes, I sent you a link to the state website, and it has a sample. So you can pick and choose the questions that you have, and once you upload it, um, I'll I'll look at it. And you might need a little more time because Dr. Hosey might not have an opportunity to look at it before... um, to look at it before um, yeah, Friday. Before Friday, so I totally understand that. But we have okay. again until April thirtieth. So just try to touch bases with him sometime this week. Um, but I wouldn't touch base with him until I actually had it done. <laughs> and then maybe you could give him the state copy of what was needed, and okay. you can give him the template that you use. We are sharing the template. So you might want to wait until someone else has done theirs <laughs> and use theirs and okay. um, look at it uh, again, because all of the schools would have had approved ones last year, except for South Cod. Everyone else had an approved survey. OK, so the um, the parent involvement policy, the school compact and the school wide plan. Mm-hmm. All of that's one meeting for parents to put their input on those forms that we get out of the folder. Yes. I'm oh. going back in right now and make sure it says that on everyone. Oh, I keep forgetting me, I'm sorry. So then that sample letter that was in the folder from, I forgot, somebody's elementary school, mm-hmm. we don't really need to send that out because then that, I, or do we? Because on that, the bottom of that letter, it says um, to write on the back of this form, uh, which was, I was. And we copied them um, back to front. See the input page is oh, right okay. under it. You see okay, the input right page? Right okay. Right and all you have to do is go through and make sure that you change your school name and that's it. So that's okay. so so like Bernie's already been up here because it used to say school. So mm-hmm. Bernie's already done theirs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that would be the um and I'm sorry that it's printing out three pages. But maybe the name is a little bit longer so you can take those couple of, you know, somebody I can go and take a couple of those lines off. Um yeah. Ooh, this is like pledging. I feel like I'm being hazed. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I'm trying to make it easier. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so the shared documents really does help um, tremendously. So I appreciate you guys being willing to stretch um, to do the Google um, document. And I wanna make sure that you guys are happy and working comfortably and that we reduce the error so that we're all in a good space. Um, This is just a little bit easier for um, us, especially for the learning curve. I know that we were introduced to Office 365 this year. Um, However, this is already two years into using Google Drive. And so I would rather not switch platforms when we're now just really getting good at at using the one platform that we have. So. Hey, Natalie, if it's okay with you, I'm going to convert both of these surveys to a, an electronic platform, and I'll share that link with everyone. But it's very important that you understand that you guys have to create your own tiny URL for your school, because I don't want to get all of your results. 
Is that okay with you, Natalie? Well, everyone should have their own survey, so I wouldn't no, create it. To create the electronic version for everyone. So you're going to... So you're going to go into here and mm -hmm. let everyone and and do an electronic one for everybody? Yes. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay, never mind. Um, if someone would like for Kim to do that, I would um, email her um, individually. I don't want that to take away from your local school responsibilities by taking okay. that on. Um, and it's a lot. Um, I will just tell you. That, um, I would hate for you to take on that responsibility. Um, yeah, I wouldn't take on that responsibility. If you guys want to reach out to Kim for technical support and how to do it, then reach out to her. But that really can't be her responsibility. But I appreciate it. Thanks. No problem. Thanks, anyway. Yeah. Um, and the, a great person to reach out to, honestly, is Kelly Brown. Um, she has... Uh, we've I've already met with Kelly Brown, the person that keeps sending you the information on um, creating the survey. So reach out to Kelly and say, hey, can you teach us do the tutorial for the Excel survey? And she can she has videos for how to use Office 365 and do the Excel survey electronically. Um, and then, Kim, what you could do, which would be easy, is you could do a quick video on showing people how to go to tiny URL. And um, you could send that out. That would be great because you have the link. So, and only send it to middle and high school because we didn't talk about that with elementary. So okay, I don't want no them problem. to be confused. But it would be great if you want to send uh, do something really short and say, hey, this is how you make a tiny URL. Um, so people have that as a resource, which would be phenomenal. Um, but definitely reach out to Kelly Brown because I'm pretty sure. Um, Kim, do this. Here you go. Yep. You nobody because I don't want Kelly to get 27 emails. Kim. Uh, email Kelly Brown and say hi you know this is Kim whatever we have our school surveys coming do you have a video tutorial on uh, using Office 365 um, for the um, for Excel or whatever the Excel okay. survey and let me put that on our YouTube channel so if you you can do the legwork for that that shouldn't take that much away from your job responsibilities and we can put that on our YouTube channel and I can just email everybody out. Hey, here's Kim's quick video and Kelly Brown's um, video on how to do that. And that way, if people wanted to, um, they could actually start um, doing that. OK, cool. Thanks, Natalie. All right. Well, I'm about my time is about um, up. I want to make sure I got everyone's questions um, answered. Quick Thank question. You. What can we expect from you this week or next week in terms of the email? For what specifically? Anything. Uh, I think you said you were going to be sending us some uh, information on the uh, different forms that we're going to be using, these surveys and things, or was that just on to check on your YouTube channel for any information regarding that? I'm not going to, I shouldn't be sending anything. Your okay. job responsibility is to go to the school survey button that's here, and you're going to upload your survey. So that's what you guys have to do for me. Make yep. sure you upload your survey by Friday, and then within the next week, I will send you an email saying, yes, your survey is good to go. So that's the one thing that I need from you. Okay. Um, the only thing that I need to do, somebody tell me, I don't think anything right now. I still have not gotten the video out for you how to organize your binders um, because of my travel schedule last month. Um, I will be working on trying to get that. I apologize. I was halfway into it and my computer restarted. So I lost it and I had to start all over again. And so I need to carve out some time to get the video for you at the local school of how to organize your binder. But you have the survey folder for you to upload your survey and you have all the documents for the input meeting. So I'm not sure that you need anything else from me. Is someone still coming out to the different schools to check the binders or? Yes, your team should have been out um, to check your binder, but some of um, the teams stopped because in the midst, I let them know that the binder table of contents was not up to date. So we did that here um, on in February. So that was my way of checking you off as having all your documentation. Oh, okay. So if they didn't come and visit us, then they're not going to come. That is probably true. They will have. We will have one more meeting. I uh, one more visit 
um, in March or April and yeah, March or April and they should be out then um, to, to check your binder off. But the uh, winter, I just said, hang on because we had to revamp and get the new table of contents. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, so we the can still look for I had last month, that was it. Mm -hmm. Did someone see your binder last month? Yes. Perfect. You're good. Okay. So we can still look forward to the uh, the video that you're going to carve out time to do on yeah. how to put together the binder with the new inserts? Yes. And I think that's the only thing that I um, am at hoc for right now. <laughs> Thank you for your time. And as always, remember, here at Cobb, we are engaging our community one family at a time. So go out and engage one another today.